So I actually diagnose myself as my gut issue, my digestive issue being really my physiological root cause of my own health issue. And so I completely changed my diet to eat a gut friendly diet. And, you know, I always believe that 80% of our, our immunity is in our digestive system. So our immunity is so, so important. And because of that, I'm joined by Dr. Ram, who is an Ayurvedic physician to talk about gut health and some remedies for it in Ayurveda. So Dr. Ram, what is the definition of gut digestive health in Ayurveda? So in Ayurveda, the gut health, your digestive system is the master system. It really is the motherboard, you know, where transformation happens. Right. Right. On a physical level, from the food that you ingest, when it gets like, you know, when you what you food you eat or the things that you smell or things that you hear, uh, in basically the foods of all of your five senses, it has to be digested. Right. So. Of course, when we're talking about digestion here, we're talking about the gut health. But in Ayurveda, all of your sensory food needs to be digested through that process. You said sensory food. So things that you hear, things that you see, things that you smell, things that touches your skin. Thank you for clarifying Yeah, that. and things that you eat, you know, like right. the taste. All of that. Has to be digested. So the things that we hear like noise or the things that we see, we might see trauma right. that gets digested. Exactly. So, or the things... Or they don't get digested, it gets stagnant. Right. That's really, really important because, you know, when we think about digestion, we just think about food. Correct. So why are the sensory digestions, not just the food, so important? Because when it comes to overall balance of your health, you know, your physiology or psychology and the emotions and all of it impacts your physiology and your biochemicals and the qualities of your body and your emotions. Right. You know, Absolutely. it's not just what you eat, but even a lot of the time, what you hear can impact your, the biochemicals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the things that touch your skin. And sometimes if I don't like somebody, then I will try to, you know, that there's a cortisol, you know, there's yeah. inflammation, there's adrenal pumping yeah. and whatnot. So it really is all of the foods of all of your senses okay so when we have trauma things happening and you know we're watching it and we're hearing it um that will create an imbalance in our digestion yes it can okay but again now we have a choice just like how we say digestion begins in your oral cavity and goes all the way to till it is eliminated, till the rectal uh, right. opening, right? So just like there is a process, there is a pathway to everything. Okay. And so even when it comes to digestion, it's almost like, you know, the analogy I like to use and give is your journey from B to D, uh -huh. which means birth to death. Right. But there is in between, there's the C, right. which is the choices that we make. Right. And that is what makes the transformation happen. Because right. anything that you ingest, we all are ingesting the same thing, but the way it gets transformed, you know, foods initially, like, you know, the, you may take an apple and that apple becomes part of your skin and right. your body. Right. And that's the transformation. That's the digestion. Right. And that's the digestion, whether it is being, you know, transformed well to help you recover and heal or becoming, creating more stagnancy and creating more imbalance. Okay, so what are some of the examples that would actually weaken that digestion? So what weakens that is literally the, the you know, what you eat right. is very important. But in Ayurveda, in addition to what you eat, when you eat and how you eat also plays a big role. Okay. Uh, you know, it always, because when you think about it, okay, your when you eat is the time of the day. Okay. You know, I'm sure like, you know, a lot of you are probably also doing it or hearing about this intermittent fasting. Right. But in Ayurveda. I do that actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, in a short term, probably you might be seeing an amazing results with that. Right. But what Ayurveda says is anything when you do it in excess. Right. And for too long. Right. It will have a negative impact in the long run. Okay. 
And because it brings about the biochemical changes. And it's not saying that intermittent fasting is wrong, but what it's saying is you got to be mindful. Are you doing it right for your body type, right. for the right season, at the right phase of your life? So, but I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. Amazing. You know, because as you get older, you eat different things. You eat less. You don't need as much food. You know, that's what I noticed. True. So those conditions are very important. Always, always very, very important on that, right? And so having said that, I think it's so essential for us to know that what is when and when you eat is essential. So right. Ayurveda recommends and promotes the circadian fasting. Basically, eat your meal, uh, you know, within when the sun rises to, you know, within when the sun is up. Okay, so during the sun, daylight, when the sun is out. Yeah. Basically. When, why is that? Because that is when, like, say, for example, the middle of the day is when your digestion is the most optimum. No matter what condition digestion you are in, okay. because of the circadian rhythm of the nature, the sun is high above your head. Right. And that is when your fire in your system that, you know, is also the most um, optimum. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, I saw some Buddhist monks, they eat like one meal a day and they're eating it like in the middle of the day. Yes. Must be something intuitive about that. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was seeing. Wow. Yes. So that's really, so what are the tips other than the, uh, the what time you eat, what you eat, what other things? So when you eat it. Yeah. So like, for example, the timings is one is, is that, but how? Okay. Means in what kind of a mood and emotions do you eat? Right. A lot of the time, we're not even aware of how we are eating. You know, yeah. when you have eaten sometimes, when you're upset or sad or angry, do you see you actually have, you're not able to, you're, the appetite and the hunger is not there. Right. And then do you also see that, you know, it, it creates more bloating, more gassy and right. more discomforts. Right, it's and, true. And in many cultures around the world, including Ayurveda, where they see the mood in which you eat. So in many cultures, they do a grace or hold hands and pray to the grains that, you, you know, which is going to be part of your body. I always say that. <laughs> I say talk to your food. That's your right. food is a consciousness. It's a living awareness. It's so if true. If you say, I love you, I love you, I love you, the food is going to work better for you. Very I much always, so, yeah. I, I always say these things. I feel like you're speaking my language. It's so crazy. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what are other things other than food, like when you eat, what you eat, what other things? So the other thing is also like, you know, lack of uh, excessive eating, right? You know, okay. or like excessive of anything can right. also dampen and weaken your, uh, your digestive um, strength. Right. So I wanted to share two, you know, concept of Ayurveda, which is the two Sanskrit word. Uh, one is the Agni, which is Agni means the transformative energy or the fire energy, okay. which is there, the gut, the fire in your digestive okay. system, which transforms and digests and metabolizes the foods and the thoughts and the emotions, okay. the gut feeling, uh -huh. that digestion. Yeah. And then also the Ama is the byproduct of not improper digestion, which okay. is heavy, stagnant, creating energy. I see. And so these, you know, like, you know, they, they when Agni or the fire is low, then you have a chances of more stagnant energy, armor increases, which becomes the main cause of diseases. Right. Okay. So armor and what was the other word? Agni. Agni. Yeah. Okay. So we have to remember those two words. Yes. Okay. So what are some of the general remedies you could share with us about good digestive health? Um, so most importantly, eat whole food, real food. Yeah. You know, uh, not something that's canned or packaged and processed. Right. And so seasonal, you know, and I, how do you find out? Sometimes many of us have forgotten what fruits and veggies grow in what season. Now, you know, maybe you may have to now time to go visit your local, you know, farmer's market. Right. Uh, but but that, seasonal for that territory. That's right, right. Because that would be an ideal way to begin with that. Right. And then, you know, so then the other thing about it is trying to make lunch your main meal. Yes. Right. And also stopping and chewing your meal. Right. That's what I said. Yeah. I said, you know, somebody said an acupuncturist said, chew 50 times and I said, 50 <laughs> times. So now I've been trying, trying to be mindful of at least 20 times because yes. normally I would do maybe five to seven. And it's just swallow. Yes. So you're saying chew. Definitely important. It's almost like the first phase of digestion yeah. is about, you know, if you make an analogy, for example, you know, when your digestive 
fire, that Agni, mm. is low and flickering. Right. You know, you won't put a big wet log on it, right? right? You would chop the wood well and you'll make sure you'll start it with a little dry leaves, yeah. dry paper, paper. And then once it picks up, once in a while you can throw in a log and it still burns it and digests right. it. The same way, if you're not chopping the wood on your oh, oral no. cavity, the work of the oral cavity is to chop and, you know, the food to minute so that the second phase of digestion becomes very easy. Yes. And then also making sure that you incorporate six tastes in your meal. Ayurveda. Six tastes. Taste. Okay. Because Ayurveda is one of the most important balanced meal consists of all the six tastes. Okay, could, could you tell us what the six tastes are? It's sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, and astringent. Now, wow. when we talk about sweet, I'm not talking about refined sweets. Right. Talking I'm talking about, about natural yeah, sweets. Something like this raw organic honey. Correct. And, but sweets is you like in fruits. fruits and grains. Right. And proteins like absolutely. your meat and, you know, your vegetables, right. those are sweet in nature. Right, absolutely. You know, the post-digestive effect. Right. And then sour, like, you know, lime, lemon, fermented kimchi right. and anything that is in a smaller quantity. And then you also go into, you know, salt, which is very essential. There are so many varieties of salt, even sea salt, but a smaller quantity. Right. And then pungent, which is a lot of your cooking spices, right. like ginger, black pepper, garlic. These are all pungent in nature, fennel, you know, cilantro. Right. They're all pungent and they should be used you know in your meal should be there in some form and then you have the bitter and a lot of i think which one of the main um you know the ingredient that's that's missing in our meal these days is the bitter taste like which is found in a lot of the bitter greens uh -huh. you know like dandelion kale gentian rhubarb and we can go on with all the list but bitter is essential and the leafy bitter greens or leafy greens and vegetables have that astringent taste and some of the spices also has that like turmeric and nutmeg and fennel they all have astringent taste and so a meal should always have six taste okay. to support your digestion okay so what are the tips in food can you share so there are so many different types of like diet you know someone say raw food or too much protein or sugar-free all of that like you know all of them have you know, very, very, um, they, they have a medical benefits and a lot of people have benefited from it. But raw food, Ayurvedically, if your digestive system is already a little bit more weak and it's, you're feeling bloated, there is a little bit of a gassiness, there's a just little bit of a discomfort, they say, do not do anything raw. Because raw food, you know, it is more difficult for the system to digest and right. to penetrate through the, the gut flora and through the mucosal layer to be absorbed and assimilated. Right. So let's say if you take raw food, like raw juicing would be better then if you juice it? Yes. So raw juicing is good and it is better. Yeah. But you can't survive on juice alone. Right. Either. Of course not. Right. And so what in a short time, it can help you with healing, repairing, cleansing, detoxing, and it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, and I've seen amazing results with people in a short uh, raw food diet. But once you improve your digestive strength, I see. Then it is much more beneficial for a certain body type during the summer. Raw food works magical. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you have to know when to do it, how to do it, how much to do it. Exactly. You know, because I see so many like you know trends now of raw vegan, and I'm not a vegan or vegetarian. <laughs> And, uh, and some people try to heal themselves of cancer by going raw vegan. I've seen that. Yes, yeah. and people have healed yeah, from it. Yeah, they have healed. They have healed But that's, from like, again, a short term. It's not forever. Exactly. So you have to know it, when to do it, when to stop. When, okay. Yeah, and to make it far more efficient. You know, when you can actually improve your digestion and then okay. do those raw food, the effect is far more. Okay. So I see you've got some things over here. Can you describe what you have here? So these are simple herbs that can be very helpful in improving your digestive, you know, the absorption, assimilation and improving the digestion. Okay. Like, for example, for those of you who have been having a lot of bloatedness and gassiness and flatulence and, you know, having a discomfort in the digestion, if you don't have acidity and heartburn, then like, you know, this fresh ginger with a little raw honey five minutes before your meal really takes care of that issue really? you know it works fantastically wow yeah i mean within a couple do t doses of you know uh, about an inch of that or teaspoon of the scraped fresh ginger along with a little raw honey and a few drops of lime or lemon you know just literally takes away that takes care of that wow. and these like you know coriander tea and fennel 
and this is cumin. Um, so in, you combine these three? You can combine these three and make it into like, you know, what we call it the CCFT, right? You know, cumin, coriander, fennel, or whatever. If you have only one of them, you could just use one of them. But that can actually help you if you have acidity, if you have a lot of heat, and if you have any burning sensation. These helps you with your digestion, improves your digestive fire and your digestive strength. And at the same time, does not create and increase more heat. Okay. So do this, do this tea like once a day? You could do it once a day or with, you know, you like as okay. two times a day, three times oh, a day. Okay. It's something that you can use it, you know, with your meals. Okay. So Dr. Ram, what are some of the simple remedies for common digestive ailments like uh, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux? Yeah, and so there are a lot of herbs that can be used for those. But simple ones, like for example, in uh, you know cases of constipation, okay. um, having a teaspoon of uh, you know flaxseed oil or um, the uh, coconut oil, or and then also just massaging your belly from right to the left. So basically, you know, just following the large intestinal pathways, uh, the anatomical positioning, and then aloe vera gel. I mean, you know, you could take a scoop or tablespoon of that with your meal, um, you know, after meal, you can take that and that really helps with the constipation. And mm -hmm. so your flaxseed oil or coconut oil, uh, aloe and a self massage. I have and your of avocado course, oil. Absolutely. You can do the avocado or teaspoon to a tablespoon of the avocado oil. And of course, above all that hydration, you know, because, you know, you might be taking good, uh, I'm presuming that you might be taking a lot of fibers, healthy greens, but if you're not hydrating yourself and even if you're taking a lot of fibers which mm. t tends to help with constipation if you're dehydrated it just creates more bloating would it be helpful to put some of these oils these good oils into that water and drink it you could totally do that a lot of people do it and mix it in their mix it in their tea or coffee even, right. and blend it and then take it Right. And so, you know, you can do that or you can also put it on your soups and your foods and, yeah. you know, just a teaspoon or tablespoon. Or some people just like to do it with the oil, you know, and then just swallow yeah. it down with the warm water. And always remember when you're doing any oil supplements, which is very essential for you as well, do not take any cold water. That's what I tell my husband all the time. I say all the time, cold liquids is not healing all the time all the time <laughs> yes and he always drinks cold liquids that's all he wants except <laughs> coffee <laughs> okay and why is it why is the warmth healing and cool liquids not healing so in ayurveda like you know again when there's that concept of you know the toxicities which is heavy sticky and gooey and gluey um, you know, when you think about something like that, that qualities or a dirty plate, you know, which is oily, which is again, that stickiness, you know, when you pour cold water on it, what does it do? Right. Doesn't do much. Right. And when you do warm water on it, what does it do? Right. It's easier to cleanse. Right. So basically warm water helps you break through that lymphatic congestion or any of those toxicities, the undigested byproduct, which is starting to build up to creating that toxic, toxic, you know, slow buildup of cumulative toxins. Right. And so it breaks through that. It breaks and loses that stagnancy and creates a flow and helps you eliminate that. And that's why Ayurveda recommends warm. So true, because every acupuncturist that I have seen has always told me warm liquids. Every and you know, and, and, and innately, my mother would tell us when we were growing up. Right. She says cold is not. It was like cold is not good for you. Wow. So, what other remedies do you have that you could share? So when it comes to diarrhea, like right. since you asked about that, you know, in a, diary, a diarrhea condition, you could think about using the coriander or CCFT with or ginger and mix it with, you know, uh, say one fourth, half a teaspoon of ginger and one fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. You can do that, you know, boil it in a glass of water or throw it in your soups again uh -huh. and then take that nutmeg has a binding effect and it works on that. Wow. Um, yeah. So something that has a binding effect, so, it right, always is a good diarrhea. Is loose, so exactly. it's got to be binding. Okay. Yes. 
So then we had a third one, like a, was it acid reflux? Yes. Yeah, so in a lot of the acid reflux conditions, you know, I, I would recommend using a fresh cilantro juice or parsley juice or even coriander, you know, right. tea, and then aloe vera. You couldn't go wrong with the aloe vera that you know can be used as an antacid and it has mm -hmm. a neutralizing effect. And in Ayurveda, we also talk about breathing because or there is something called a cooling breath, you know, which has, it's called shitali. And it literally, and I have seen in a lot of my patients or clients who have had acidity or migraine headaches, uh, who has difficulty, you know, being exposed to too much bright light, just by doing that cooling breath, you can neutralize. And how you do it is simply, you know, just as if you imagine as if you are using a straw to drink some fluid yes. so and so when you so do you that breathe in through the mouth breathe in through the mouth and you that you know you're basically allowing the the breeze to touch the tip of your tongue right and then take a long deep breath reaching it all the way to the belly and then exhale nice and deep and long from the nose, nose the from the nose oh. so you inhale through the mouth and exhale through the nose. And so the idea is the breeze touches the tip of your tongue right. and you do it in a very gentle, not high intensity. You don't have to go, <laughs> no, it's just right. gentle, you know. <laughs> it's funny. You know? <laughs> and, and, then, and then, you know, and you exhale nice and deep, you know, ease, you know, cool note, and calm. So. You have to stay there, yeah. And then again, repeat that three to four times. And as I'm telling you, try that. Like, you know, inhale through the mouth, right. touching the you know tip of your tongue, exhale through the nose. Immediately, your body temperature goes down. Wow. And that's how powerful it is. And so, you know, these are a few of the tips that I think, you know, can also help you with acidity and yeah. heartburns. So we covered uh, constipation, Lose diarrhea. Burn, yeah and acid reflux. So any final thoughts on our digestive health? Yeah, you know, your digestion is your relationship to the food that you eat. And but also your digestion, you are what you digest physically, emotionally and psychologically. Right. So it's not just food, it's the mental and the emotions. Yeah, yes, that's really profound. So I highly, highly recommend that you contact Dr. Ram if you want private one-on-one -on -one consultation treatments with him. He's offering online um, treatments due to COVID. So anybody in the world can be in touch with Dr. Ram and benefit from his wisdom, knowledge, intelligence in Ayurveda. And what's unique about Dr. Ram is he is a physician. He is a doctor in Ayurveda. He's not just a practitioner. And there are very, very few Ayurvedic physicians in the U.S. and around the world. So if you want a private consultation, visit him on his website. You can reach him through his website, which is thehealinggarden.com with one G in the middle, thehealinggarden.com. Dot com. And if you want to visit all of my spiritual and holistic living tips, just go to my website at yinnyangliving.com. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste.